Hello friends, welcome to the Bible in five minutes or less. I'm bringing the light over here. <gasps> now I can see. We're doing a correction today. It's not a big thing, but a friend of mine, uh, he will remain nameless, Mark. Um, <laughs> that was good, wasn't it? <laughs> he will remain nameless, Mark B. Uh, brought to my attention that I had taught something. It's not really wrong, but I need to clarify a little bit. So... Let me, uh, it's Romans 7, uh, verses uh, 19, uh, verse 19 and 20. So let's just read those first, and I'll tell you what the, what the clarification is. It's not really wrong, but it's a clarification. For what, I do is not the, for what I do is not the good I want to do, nor the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it's no longer I doing it, but the sin living in me that does it. And last time I taught on this, I said there's two dogs, and whichever dog you feed, the flesh or the spirit, is the dog that leads, is the dog that's in charge. That's not true. It works like this. You have, I don't want to call your, your born-again spirit a dog. You have a, you're brand new. You've been born again. You have a brand new spirit. Live, your spirit has been made new, and it's in concert with the Holy Spirit. Your spirit and the Holy Spirit are working together inside of you. And so you have a brand new nature. There's not two dogs that work within you. You just have the one Holy Spirit with your spirit that is that propels you to good deeds, that, that leads you into all, that leads and guides you into all truth. But instead of saying there's two dogs, we have that. That's our new nature. That's who we are. But the old nature still is, comes up from the dead. The old nature, the easiest way to understand this is the old nature, it's like an intruder that lurks in your house, that lives in your house. You don't always see him, but when you do see him, he leads you into the dark. He leads you into, into disaster. He's, he's, he's your old nature. And what God has done, and I'm going to explain why, God has left a residue of your old nature inside of you. The sin living in me, that sin, but the sin living in me that does it. God has left just a residue of your nature, your old nature in you. And the obvious question is, why? Well, two reasons. And this is the first reason came upon me today. It's not the most important. If we got born again, let's put it like this. We got born again. And all of a sudden, we were perfect. We never sinned again. We, we, went, we went around doing all the works of God. There was no issues. We didn't ever fall short. First of all, we wouldn't be able to minister to people because they couldn't relate to us and we couldn't relate to them. Another, another thing is we'd be showing God too much. And what I mean by that, God's invisible for a reason. He wants people to love him, not for the promised reward or the, pro, or, or, the, or the threat of punishment. God wants men to love him because he's worthy of love, because he's a good father and a good God. So if we became supermen, not having any darkness at all within us, we would reveal too much of God to the world. God wants... God allows that darkness inside of us, that little bit of darkness, not our new nature, but that little bit of darkness, that intruder. It keeps us real with people in the world. We're still able to relate to people in the world. They're able to relate to us and we can minister to them in their darkness and it keeps us a little bit weak. And I call it the two W's. You can experience God in two W's. The weakness, you experience God in weakness or in worship. And your weakness, that darkness living inside of you, keeps you coming back to the throne of God. It keeps you going back. Because Jesus, um, Paul said, come boldly to the throne of mercy and grace in your time of need. God's greatest desire for you is to be in relationship with you. Just like if you have kids, you're listening to this, you have children, you want to see those kids. You want to spend time with them. You want to love them and them love you. It's the same with God. He's the perfect father and wants to love us and him and, and us. He loves us and us love him. And so by leaving that little bit of weakness in us, it keeps us coming back to the throne. Oh, father, I'm weak today. I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with that. Okay, boy, there's the grace, man. There's the grace, boy. It's good to see your face. I'll see you tomorrow because you're still weak. It seems counterintuitive, but go back and listen to this message. Ponder what I'm saying. Pray about this. This is important because so many people, you know, you and your you and your new nature are perfect. You're perfect, but that darkness is always tugging at you. Always, uh, you know, your body's the, it's always tugging at your body and, and your mind, and it's just keeping you weak. But God allowed that little bit. But again, you can always overcome by the Spirit. Romans eight. So God's left you a way out the Spirit. So rejoice and and fellowship with God and love Him. That's the point.